Everybody's opinion matters, but when it comes to security, I really believe that it's vital that we understand what works and what doesn't. And the only way to do that is through proper testing. So let's do some fact checking. First off, don't panic. I've been making a lot of security videos recently and there's a lot of stuff out there on social media showing crime happening. But powered two-wheeler theft has been dropping over the last three years and statistically, you're not likely to have your bike stolen. The point is, you need to choose the best security that suits you, use it, and then just stop worrying and enjoy riding a bike. Now obviously manufacturers wanna get their message out to you, the customer, uh, and they want you to love their product, they want you to buy it. Now, social media is a brilliant way of doing that. And everybody's opinion does matter. It's uh, when I'm choosing things to buy, you know, I'll, I'll get several opinions and try and weigh up what people think of things. But again, back to security, does it work? And it's disappointing to see that even some of the really big media outlets now are rating stuff five out of five based on how it looks and feels, not how protective it is. And three locks have featured really prominently recently, yet none of them seem to have been tested properly. The Oxford Beast, 22 mil chain and lock. Light lock. And the Kryptonite Keeper 785. This seemed a bit bigger in the uh, video I saw it in, but it wasn't, this is the one. Now I'm not saying I'm the best person at testing chains and locks. I'm not trying to claim to be the leading authority on it. As a bit of background, I've been testing motorbike kit for 15, 15 years or so, something like that, working through magazines and things like that. I'm now a consumer editor at Bennett's Bike Social. Uh, I'm a member of the International Association of Auto Theft Investigators and also part of the industry's Motorcycle Crime Reduction Group. That means I'm talking to the industry, police forces, various people about motorcycle crime and what's happening in the UK at the moment. Again, I'm not saying I'm best. I'm just trying to give you a bit of background on the testing I do. And I, part of my job is testing chains and locks. I'm not trying to replace Sold Secure, which is the ratings body for locks especially here in the UK, you know, that it's part of the Master Locksmiths Association. You will find good locks with motorcycle gold, motorcycle diamond. Those ratings help you buy stuff and it's important to look for that. And you'll see how uh, Soul Secure ratings come into some of the stuff we're testing here. The reason I test stuff is part of a throwback from when I used to work on Ride Magazine donkeys years ago. Uh, we used to test stuff very thoroughly. Um, didn't care what advertisers thought, uh, we'd test it and we'd find out what happened. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Now I don't normally show locks being tested. All of the reviews are written articles and you can find them in the, the link up there um, or down in the description. But what I'm gonna show you now is some of the testing that I do. And you've got to please bear in mind that the tests are done under controlled conditions and in certain circumstances that you wouldn't necessarily find in the field, but they reflect field attacks. The reason they're done in these circumstances is so that they're repeatable. If we have any problems, we can repeat them. And obviously when I'm doing tests down the line, they're repeatable. So they give a fair comparison of the products. The times you will see it take me to cut things won't necessarily be a direct relation to how long it would take in the field. That would depend on what tools you were using. I use a mains angle grinder, for instance, because it's repeatable. I've benchmarked it against battery grinders. So I know kind of the times that will reflect, but you know, I'm using a torquey mains grinder and it gives me that repeatability that allows me to say in the reviews, this lock offers this level of performance, this lock offers this level of performance. First off then, the Oxford Beast. Now this has been lauded by uh, influencers on social media as the best motorcycle security. It's a 22 mil chain. This thing is big and heavy. You're not gonna be able to carry it around with you on the bike. I'm gonna put it down because, mainly because it makes a lot of noise. So it is a big chain and lock. And I've seen people saying, look at this, it's the best security. But they didn't test it, they didn't cut it apart. I did, and I'm glad to say that honestly, yes, it is very good. Uh, there are some chains that become a bit more brittle when they're hardened up for um, angle grinder attacks, for instance, it depends on the case hardening, which is like the outside of the metal and the through hardening, which is how deep into the metal they're hardening. I'm simplifying things here. Some hardening processes can make them quite brittle and make them susceptible to a sledgehammer attack. Uh, and some have even shattered just under one or two blows. Again, I'm doing sledgehammer attacks under perfect conditions using a piece of railway track as an anvil uh, and give myself plenty of space to swing with a sledgehammer. The point is, a sledgehammer attack can easily be defeated by keeping your chain off the ground or out of the way so you couldn't swing a sledgehammer at it. It's included in the testing because it's plausible 
and it does give an indication of the quality of hardening of a chain, but it's easy to defeat. So good thing is the Oxford Beast, it's, I, I couldn't break it with a sledgehammer, obviously you can't break it with bolt croppers. 13 mil, you're getting towards the limits of what you can do with bolt croppers. Some will, some won't, but 22 mil, you can't even get it in the jaws. Angle grinder attack, yes, it's up there with the top 22 millimeter chains. It's a really good lock. There's some other stuff in there. I really do urge you to have a look at the league table where I've picked out some of the best security you can buy. And it is based on this testing data, not based on what I kind of like the look of. So the Oxford Beast is sold to secure motorcycle diamond. Motorcycle gold doesn't actually include an angle grinder attack, uh, though that doesn't mean that the locks won't resist angle grinder attacks as we've seen with all the testing we've done. Uh, motorcycle diamond is a relatively new rating and includes a 90 second angle grinder attack. You'll also find the sold to secure ground anchor diamond, which includes uh, even more intense angle grinder attack, but only for ground anchors. But yeah, the Oxford Beast, it is a good lock. It's right up there with Pragmatis, Almax, Squire, the big locks, the big quality stuff. What you need to do now, you know it's good, go and check out the features of all of them and decide which one works for you. I do need to add, yes, it can be picked. Yes, I've seen lock picking lawyers videos. Yes, they're very entertaining, they're very good. But even he now says at the end of most of his videos, a picking attack is very unlikely in the field. In any case, that's all I have for you today. And certainly in the UK, with motorcycle theft, lock picking isn't an issue. Now, I don't do lock picking tests because I'm not a professional lock picker, and you do need a serious amount of skill and some serious tools as well for a lot of these lock pickings. Certainly the tools that lock picking lawyer and Bosnian Bill made are the tools that will get in these. You still need a lot of skill to use them. Soul Secure does do uh, picking tests, and they're, they're not picking them to say, yes, we could pick it, no, we couldn't, or how quick we could do it. It's how quick thieves in the field are gonna be doing it. And honestly, it's not an issue. So unless there's a serious flaw with a lock, like the locks years and years ago that could be opened with a um, ballpoint pen, uh, unless there's an issue, obviously, it's, it's not something you need to worry about. So light lock. This one's really big with the influencers, um, but nobody's tested it. Nobody seems to have done what, all the commenters are asking for an angle grinder test. To be honest, some of the testers seemed reluctant to break it because they wanted to keep using it. Which to me, that's defeating the object of security reviews because you do need to know if they're resistant to, to attack. I bought one and this is what I did to it. And please excuse the ropey audio in this. I was rushing to make these while I was testing a whole massive batch of other security products. And you can see all those reviews in those links. Needless to say, this isn't a way anybody's going to attack one of these quickly. But it's part of attack testing. And it, you know, to test the lock properly, you do have to attack test it. So uh, a hardened chain, you're going to, you won't touch it with a hacksaw. Tungsten carbide tipped blades can go through them easier. I know that they go through this easily, more easily. But we're just doing the, it's only fair to test this with the same testing criteria and testing methods are used for any of the locks to test. So fair enough, I'm holding this in a vice, but that's for convenience. Bear in mind, whenever you're cutting a lock, you'd be pulling it tight from the bike to hold it. I'm still not through this. I'm not as fit as a... Teenage hoodlum. Right. Yes, it can be hacksawed. As with all testing. Be it ours or sold secured, we sold secured, we're using ideal testing circumstances. You can cut it with a hacksaw, and that's just a standard bimetal hacksaw blade, but it's not easy. So from that, the light lock isn't designed to be your at-home security 
for where somewhere you're parking it all the time at night where they might see it and come and attack it. But for a, a opportunist thief, especially if you're out and about, which is what the light is designed for, so far, testing with a hacksaw, I'd be happy to use that. Right, so these are just some large side cutters I got from Aldi for £2.49. I've actually already tried this and I can tell you it doesn't seem to go through. Make sure we just... <clears throat> no, I'm not going to get through that. So large side cutters, you're not going to get through that. Maybe somebody much stronger than me with high quality ones and might start nibbling it. But these are just handheld ones. Let's try it with some wire cutters. Now these can beat some cable locks. I've used these in testing cable locks before. Let's give them it a go. Let's try further down, be fair. So far, based on handheld cable cut locks, for an opportunist thief, yeah, I'd still be happy to use this. Okay, bolt croppers. Now these are 42 inch bolt croppers. You can tell I'm rushing this video. These 42 inch bolt croppers, these are what are used for lock testing. Um, we're into the realms of stuff that a thief is going to be carrying with them, either on a scooter while their mate's riding. You know, they're big, but they're what get through things. You're not going to waste your time carrying smaller croppers if these will chew through a lot of stuff. Um, they also might carry them in a car or in a van. There's plenty of ways to carry them about. I think it's a bit of a waste of time testing the light lock with these bolt croppers because bolt croppers are meant for cutting a solid item. They won't, uh, typically they don't cut cable locks, but it is part of the um, standard testing, so we'll give it a go. touched it uh, and yeah there's no surprise because it, it's not what they're meant for but yeah for a bolt copper attack stand up fine right cable cutters a lot of you watching this video will already have seen these cable cutters because they're the ones that lockpicking lawyers got um, 150 pounds from Amazon uh, I should point out if anybody thinks I'm showing people how to cut locks educating people on uh, breaking locks it's pretty naive. Yeah, I, I wouldn't insult most criminals to think that I'm showing them what to do. Uh, the standard um, testing that's done by us and by Salt Secure is based on what's actually happening. Uh, cable cutters like these aren't seen commonly. Uh, these I had to import from America, uh, so obviously they're easier to get for not picking wire. Um, but they, you know, just bought them on Amazon, imported by Amazon, no problem. You're unlikely to see many criminals cutting these, but they adapt to what's being used. Now, a few years ago, uh, a lot of cable locks were motorcycle gold, um, but they were downgraded when cable cutters become more prominent, typically smaller ones. But as cable cutters became more used, the cable locks, a lot of them got downgraded to sold secure motorcycle silver. So this is motorcycle gold. You've probably seen lock picking lawyer cut it. Uh, it's only fair that I give it a go. Where I've been trying to use the light lock, typically a bicycle, you're probably going to chain it off the ground, uh, well off the ground, around the frame and around a cycle rack. With motorcycle, you're probably going to be going through the wheel. So you're probably going to be near the ground or on the ground. And to be fair, you're probably going to have it through something fairly near the ground. So that access to having the bolt copies for some leverage on the ground isn't beyond the realms of possibility. Let's give it a go with these cutters. So I'll try it by hand first. Uh, 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 I know this 
just took longer to help me out. Help me out, but... Uh, it's hard. I think you could do it on the ground. There we go. So I first tried that with it against my waist. Somebody stronger. It's a possibility. Once you can get some leverage on the ground, it's a lot more doable. Oh, I missed one there. There we go. So, I've not been as quick, uh, but certainly with the right tool, a cable cutter will definitely get through this. We've seen We've seen the other videos that have been done. That's another reason why this isn't a lock that is that you'd use all the time in the same location at home or whatever. When you're out and about, there's a quick way of securing your bike. Yeah, you know, it's unlikely somebody's gonna come across with these, but it is a possible attack method. Still more likely, it's gonna be an angle going attack. Let's just see if we can do it a bit quicker. sleeve off, uh, it's a neoprene sleeve that just, um, it's just velcroed on. Underneath it, the lock is exactly the same as the bike lock. Uh, so if they are gonna come at it with an angle grinder, this is what will happen. So yes, that was a quick angle grinder attack, but before you start getting too het up about it, I'm using a mains grinder, it's quite a high torque grinder. The actual attack in the field would depend on the tools that the thief was using. But I'm using a 1.2 mil cutting disc, which is a realistic attack method. It frustrates me when I see some of the videos on YouTube claiming 10 minute attack times. They're using grinding discs and they're just tickling the locks. Bullshit, but I don't, <laughs> The reason I've never shown attack times, I've never shown this kind of stuff, is because far too many people start saying, no, it's not even worth bothering, is it? They've all got angle grinders, they'll, they'll just get through that in seconds. Why waste my money? Because they're not all walking around with angle grinders. So it's, while yes, it does happen, using any security, as we've proved with looking at data, using even the most basic disc lock, can reduce the chance of your bike being stolen by a factor of three. And remember, don't get panicky about it. Use some security and then stop worrying about it. It depends where you live and what the crime rate is like in there. You need to be aware of crime and then you just need to react to that. You need to use some security and then just get on enjoying riding a bike or a scooter. But anyway, that angle grinder cut time was equivalent to a light chain. So I, I was actually surprised by how well this fed uh, and it's, it's down to the design that it makes it take as long as a chain. My worry with the light lock is, and this is, this is just guesswork, but it looks a bit easier to attack. So theoretically, if you had all things equal, if a criminal was faced with this and a chain, this looks like the one you'd maybe go for more, but it is light. It's half the weight of, say, a nine millimeter chain. Uh, disadvantage is it's only a meter long, so you're gonna have to get your bike close to something to be able to tether it to something. You could chain it to another bike fairly easy, so that's good. But if you need that length, then Lightlock suggests that you buy a second one. Um, and then you can link them together, which is a clever design, really clever design. The problem is then, it becomes slightly heavier than a, say, a nine mil chain lock, which you can pick up for 66 quid. But there are advantages to the Lightlock. Having properly tested it, obviously I haven't got one anymore, but that's fine, because that's what a review is meant to do. Having properly tested it, I can say, yeah, I would actually use this in the right circumstances. I wouldn't use it to lock my bike up in the same place overnight where somebody's gonna see it and they might think about attacking it. But as a bit of portable security that you can even put in your rucksack but do wear a back protector, yeah, you're not really gonna know you're carrying this. So yeah, actually, it's pretty good. The Kryptonite Keeper 785. Now, after I bought this and it was delivered, it was laying on the floor and my wife saw it and said, Oh, look at the cute little baby look. But no, I said. According to one of the world's most popular YouTubers, this is the best motorcycle lock. A lot of people have watched that video. This is a seven mil chain. 
and apparently it took four minutes and 10 seconds for what is claimed to be a professional thief to cut through this with an angle grinder. That is really, really impressive. There are no chains that I've ever cut that have ever come close to that. If this thing can do this, this 30 odd quid chain is gonna be the best motorcycle lock in the world. So this is what happened. <laughs> Okay, I'm stopping there, which you might think is a bit early, but I've lost most of the teeth off the blade, so I have to change the blade. Uh, it is actually biting through, that's further than I'd normally get on, um, on a chain. Um, this seems more case hardened than through hardened potentially, we'll see maybe when we do some more attacking. Uh, because once it started to bite, it seemed to get through, but yeah, I'm losing the teeth off of the blade. So, also I'm really relying on the vice here. With a cable lock, it's there just to give you something to keep it pulled tight. With this, I'm really relying on the vice to keep this chain rock solid to give me something to bear into. You couldn't really cut this. It would just skate across if you didn't have that to put the weight on. With the cable lock, like I say, all you need is it kept tight, which you can do putting it tight against the wheel. So, I'd say hacksaw attack, most basic attack, yeah, it's all right. Unsurprisingly, that was very easy, really. Obviously, you've got the leverage on there. But normally, I'd go through one side at a time. This one, I just thought, oh, I'll just try it through both. And yeah, it's just gone straight through it. Um, this is totally unsurprising. It's, I expected this to go. I was using a piece of railway sleeper as an anvil, that's pretty unlikely, but you could see a, another sledgehammer head used as an anvil. Uh, even hitting onto concrete can break, especially something that breaks this easily. You know, this went in one good hit. So it's an unlikely attack, but it's part of testing. And unsurprisingly, this Soul Secure Bicycle Bronze Lock did break through sledgehammer attack. Right, angle grinder attack. Now, according to the video I've seen, this seven millimeter chain, which is sold secure bicycle bronze, there is no way I would ever recommend, and no way sold secure would recommend this as a motorcycle lock. This seven millimeter lock apparently takes four and a half minutes for a professional thief to cut through, and apparently they were scared while they were cutting it, uh, worried about the bits flying off and worried about it bucking around. Um, I don't think criminals really worry too much about health and safety, but I've got my grinder here. Yes, it's a mange grinder. This is our benchmark for testing. Um, let's see what happens using a proper cutting disc. messed up a little bit uh, you saw I, I lost um, lost my grip there uh, so it took a little bit longer than I would have expected it to um, when I'm testing chains I will have a few attempts on different links just to kind of get a feel for how it cuts a proper motorcycle lock not a seven millimeter chain is going to take longer to cut than this but there's no denying that it can be quite quick to cut through a chain with an angle grinder the point is it's a very noisy attack and a thief has to have made the decision that they're not worried about getting caught and despite what you might think, and despite what social media shows, it isn't, they're not just out there all the time with angle grinders. They will tend to pick on the bike that's the easiest target. So this is better than nothing, but it's not four and a half minutes. We all have a responsibility to encourage people to get into motorcycling. And that means not dragging them down with miserable tales of crime and danger and everything like that. Don't we want motorcycling to cons to continue and for more people to get into it and experience what we all love about motorcycling. It's brilliant. So honestly, any security, using any security, massively reduces the chance of your bike being stolen. By a factor of three, just using a basic disc lock. Based on the data I took from a year of theft claims from all Bennett's customers, using proper heavy duty security, 
like the Oxford Beast or some of the other 22 mil chains, or even 14, 15, 16, 19 mil chains, that can make your bike less likely to be stolen than a car. So let's not keep dragging people down with these ideas that you get a bike, you're gonna get killed or you're gonna get it stolen. Presumably you're watching this because you're into bikes and you love bikes, so let's share that. But putting out a video saying that this seven mil lock lasts four minutes and 10 seconds in an angle grind attack is, oh, sorry, it's ridiculous. It, on the one hand, it's good that it's, it might make people think, hey, great, yeah, 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 great. I'll buy that, use it, and they'll use it because it's so light. They'll use it, and they'll carry it, and, and it'll get used, which will reduce the chance of their bike being stolen. But it's misleading. You know, there's a lot of good security out there, and I, that's why I really think that you need to, it's not just, it's not as simple as the video that says, here's the best security in 2020. In the same way that you can't just say, this is the best kit for you. It's, the only way to really do it is to test everything and then say, this is what we found of everything we've tested. You have to put a little bit of work in yourself and, and read those tests and understand them or watch them and then make the choice of what works for you. And again, you've seen two very fast angle grinder attacks here and it'd be easy to think that there's no point, but I can assure you that thicker chains take a lot longer to cut. And remember, I'm using my effectively lab conditions. I'm not trying to show anybody up here and, and people in glass houses certainly shouldn't throw stones, but I honestly really feel passionately about reviews because there's a huge responsibility that when you're recommending something, potentially people are gonna be spending money on that. Uh, and it's very easy to get something for review if you have a good viewer base or, you know, a, a fairly strong outlet. We have a lot of readers. It's fairly easy to get the stuff um, to review. But then you've got that responsibility that people are gonna read that and you, you, if, they, if they trust that opinion and they buy it, that's on you that, that, that they've bought it. So you need to, I think, put the most you possibly can in to saying, I've, I've thoroughly tested this. This is my background. This is my experience of things before. You know, it's no good saying this is the best jacket I've ever worn if you've only ever worn one or two jackets before. You need to kind of have that experience of stuff in the background. While I've been editing this, I realized that I could say that now is four minutes and 10 seconds since I started cutting that Kryptonite 785. But having said that, you know, everybody's opinion is really valid. And so when you're watching or reading any reviews, just kind of get a feel for what the background is, um, read between the lines, check if, if it does feel like everything, every single point has been covered. If you come out of a review thinking, oh, I wonder though how it did this, then maybe there's something missing. The main thing I really want you to take from this video though is to use some security and then stop worrying about it and enjoy riding a motorbike. Um, choose the right security for you and that means properly taken in the reviews. If you use our league tables and our reviews, you should be able to get a good idea of what works for you. There's no commercial links there, there's no kickbacks or anything. They're just straight down the line, this is what happened and you can make the call from there. Other than that, just go out and enjoy the bikes. This is a Kryptonite Keeper 785. Now you might have seen this in a video as being um, kind of shown as some of the, it's just kept defeating a, a apparently professional bike.